So what we have so far are two kinematic equations for constant acceleration. We have that velocity is the initial velocity plus acceleration times time, and position is the initial position plus the initial velocity times time plus one-half the acceleration times time squared. And we notice that there are different variables in these two equations, so you might choose one or the other depending upon what you wanted. So we can even make a chart here of all the things that these equations have and the things that they don't have. So I'm going to leave out in this chart the initial conditions. Those don't change over time. And in fact, if you're running the experiment, you can choose them to be zero. But as time goes on, t obviously changes, the position changes, the velocity changes, acceleration could change, although we've picked the specific case of constant acceleration. But in general, it could change. So let's look at the first equation. What does it have? Well, it has velocity and acceleration and time. What does the second equation have? It has position and time. It doesn't have velocity, but it does have acceleration. Let's imagine now that you're doing a problem. And in this imaginary problem, you want to find the position, but you don't know the acceleration. What do you do? Well, it's not an unsolvable problem. Probably what you would do if you know everything else, you just don't know the acceleration, is you would use the first equation, and you would solve this equation for the thing you don't know, the acceleration. So if I solve that simple line equation for the thing I don't know, and I divide both sides by t, I can get an acceleration. And then, what do you do? Well, then I take the second equation, right? And I'm going to plug in that thing I just found. So I get that x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus 1 half. Instead of a now, I'm going to put v minus v naught all over t times t squared. And I see that the squared goes away with this factor of t. So I get x naught plus v naught t plus 1 half v times t minus 1 half v naught times t. I see that I have two factors of v naught here, two factors of v naught. So I'm going to simplify that. And in fact, I'll just write it back up in the chart. I'm going to simplify that. And you can show in more detail that this is true, that I get that x my, is equal to x naught plus, and I have a uh, one half, and I have a factor of v, and then I have a full factor of v naught minus one half factor of v naught, so that's minus one remaining factor of v naught times t. Okay, so I have another equation. Here's the part I want you to realize I could have just done this in a problem and find a number in here, and then plug that number in instead of the equation. So I haven't actually done anything different, and that's anything new, rather, and that's the part that I want you to see. I haven't done anything new. I've just kind of rearranged some stuff. But when I've rearranged this stuff, I have a, another equation. Okay, so sometimes people call this another kinematic equation. It's just a shortcut of solving for the thing you don't know and then using that to find the thing that you do know. But if you notice here, we can check what it has. It has position and whoop, position, and it has time and it has velocity, but it does not have acceleration just as we predicted. Okay, so if you stare at this for a while, you realize there has to be one more and there is one more. And if you stare at this for a while, you realize there must be one that has position and velocity and acceleration, but no time. And there is that equation. What would you do? Well, you'd pick one of these other ones, solve it for time, and then plug it into the one of the other ones, any of the other ones, and uh, simplify it, and voila, you'd get the last equation. Um, and so I'm going to let you do that on your own. When you do that, it turns out you get a result that looks like v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2a 
x minus x naught. But here's the deal. It also is nothing new. There's no new calculus, no new physics, no new anything, just a little bit of algebra massaging. So sometimes people call these the four kinematic equations. The four, whoop, four kinematic equations look like this. Okay, but here's what I want you to remember. What I want you to remember for solving problems is that any two will do. You only ever need two of these equations to find what you're looking for. You don't have to memorize all four because the other two are just rearrangements of any two that you remember. They're all equivalent, and they tell you motion in constant acceleration. This is kinematics.